this is the last recording in this room and it's a real moment that I want to capture because this is the room where it all began seven years ago when I started doing live videos and I announced to the world that I wanted to set up a global community of artists and I sat outside there and did a live session. I sat in here and recorded all my Seven Keys course and all the lessons inside the hub and I've gone live. In fact, I've worked it out that I've recorded well over a thousand videos in this very room. So this is my last one from the dining room of Albert Road. <laughs> so it feels quite emotional. Like I remember when I first started, I was, I had a desk and I was sitting over there and the lighting was terrible and the mic was awful. And, um, and I look back now at those videos and I just cringe. I had pink hair. <laughs> that bit I didn't cringe about. That was great. But the, um, the way I, I don't know, I look back now and I just think, gosh, if I could go back to tell myself what life would be like seven years on, because I remember setting up all those years ago and I was absolutely terrified, absolutely terrified. And I felt like an imposter. I felt like that I was chasing a dream that wasn't real. I had so many people say to me that this just would not work. I wouldn't set this up if I were you, you're going to waste your time. And it's a real lesson to me to really focus on what it is that you love doing and stick to what you love doing. Because if you love what you do, then it really doesn't matter where it takes you. Because I knew that in that moment of me doing this, I loved it. And I remember sitting with my friend Sharon. And Sharon and I set up United Art Space together actually seven years ago. So I had this idea to set up a, a space for artists online, uh, but I was too scared to do it by myself. I was terrified. So I, I went to Sharon and I said, will you set up United Art Space with me and be on the business? And she was, you know, part of the business. And um, we, we kind of did sessions together in the beginning and Sharon and I would just sit and go live and we'd have a glass of wine and we'd just talk. <laughs> That's how it all began. And um and I remember really quickly into it, it was like two months in. I remember Sharon saying to me, oh, you know, I really do love where you're going with this, but I want to focus on my own art. And I think Sharon was realizing that, you know, setting up my vision, United Art Space and teaching thousands of people around the world to believe in themselves and to be inspired to make art and all this stuff was time consuming and it was going to take us away from our own art and we both knew that and then Sharon quickly realized that I don't want it to take me from my own art and and it was just such a good frank discussion that we had together and I remember Sharon just saying you know I want to go all in on my art and I was like I don't <laughs> I want to go all in on United Art Space and it was such a moment and we had this really nice um, clarity for both of us that Sharon was like, this is the direction I want to go in. And I was like, this is the direction that I want to go in. And Sharon ended up coming out of the business, but said, I still want to support you. I still want to be part of it because I believe in you. And I was like, oh my gosh, Sharon, and this is why I adore Sharon so much. We have such a close friendship. And Sharon was that person that believed in me in the beginning. And for her to say that, and she said, I believe in you and I believe in what you're doing and I want to support you. And so she would come on live sessions and we would sit and chat. I had no idea what United Arts Base was back then. I just knew that I wanted to reach people. That's all I knew. I wanted to reach people and I wanted to inspire people. And I, we used to do art challenges and just get people together making art. And I, I loved doing all like the set up the emails and the tech and all of that kind of side, which Sharon hated. And I don't blame her because it is pretty stressful. I kind of reveled in all of that. And so I was really then finding my place in all of this and what I enjoy. And so, you know, seven years on to be where we are today, to really think back to how I felt back then and how terrified I was and how it was really having Sharon by my side. And I always say that if you don't believe in yourself, surround yourself with people who believe in you. 
because it's those people that will carry you forwards to believe in yourself. And that's been so important throughout my whole life. Those moments where I don't believe in myself, I, I reach out to people and I have friends, I have mentors, and they are important to me because I have wobbles. And when I have wobbles, I reach out to them. And so it was amazing to have Sharon there by my side in the beginning. And I remember having all the imposter syndrome of I'm not an expert. I don't know what I'm really talking about. I don't know whether I can actually hold attention because I have ADHD and dyslexia. So I was holding onto those stories for a long time that what if I can't read people's names and I can't think about what I'm talking about? What if I, what if I, what if I, plan a live session and I can't be there because sometimes I can't work. My brain just won't function. It's all these things that was getting in my way. And I also just remembered being so insecure around other people doing what I wanted to do already. You know, you'll have this, you'll see other artists who are out there making art much better than you with all the things. And you think to yourself, what's the point? What's the point in me doing it when they're doing it? And there is a point because there's a point for everybody. And so I have had to do a lot of mindset work over the years, really have had to work on my confidence and on my belief and on my knowledge as well, because 80% of success is ourselves, our mindset, it's how we approach things. And then the other 20% is the knowledge, the steps that we have to take to do this, the the skill required. And so I've been working on both of those collectively over the years. But I'm sharing this because I just think it's so normal to feel that imposter syndrome. In fact, I was listening to a podcast episode the other day and it was with Stephen Bartlett. And he said something along the lines of, we shouldn't call it imposter syndrome because it's actually a good thing to feel out of your depth and threatened by other people because it means that you're putting yourself in that situation where you're growing and you're starting to learn and you're in a new environment and that feeling is normal. It's like if you join a class and everyone is like up here and you're feeling down here, it's normal to feel that way. If you start a new job, that first week in your new job, you will feel incompetent. You feel like an imposter because it's normal. And there's actually a site, there's a theory around this, isn't there? That when you first start something new, it's you, you have this unconscious incompetence and unconscious incompetence is when you feel excited about something so say i've just found my soapstone right this is a great example so somebody said to me lindsay in my community was talking about this medium soapstone and how she's been carving with it and she can carry little bits on the move and and uh it's just really nice to work with it's nice and soft and I was thinking, oh, I quite fancy doing that. And so I've ordered some and I did a course and I'm all enthused and I'm like doing all this stuff now with my stone. I'm in that stage of unconscious incompetence, which means that there's probably areas of the soapstone. I have no clue and I'm probably doing things to it that you shouldn't do or there's ways to work with it. But I don't know at the moment because I'm all like, woohoo, this is so great now. What happens then is you then start to find other soapstone artists and you start to notice soapstone more because it's now in the Raz, the red car. You start to see it everywhere. And now you're seeing all these amazing artists that do all these funky things with soapstone and they're doing all these amazing stuff. And you start to go, oh, oh, mine isn't like that. Oh, I don't use soapstone in that way. Oh, I don't do it like this. <laughs> now I'm consciously incompetent because I'm noticing it and now I'm starting to feel crap about my own work and I'm like, oh, this isn't good. This, oh, I should be doing it this way. Oh, I need to do this. I need this tool. I don't use this tool. I use this. And, and that's the danger, isn't it? That's the imposter syndrome, really. It's that consciously un incompetent. Um, and it, incompetent, you know, isn't a, a kind of nice word, really, is it? But it, it is describing something where we're noticing differences towards someone else or something else or things that other people are doing that we're not doing that make us question our competency. And so it might be that we're incompetent in 
a certain area, but it doesn't mean that we can't be competent. It just means that we've got some things to brush up on. And so then what tends to happen, people will either quit at that point because they can't handle the feeling um, or they push through and start to think to themselves, right, I'm going to go and buy a big saw now so that I can start to use the stone in this way. Or I'm going to go and buy, seems that some people are using this type of oil as opposed to this type of oil. So I'm going to buy some of that and test that out and see how that works. And maybe I'm going to do, buy this in a different size. You know, these things now are what I'm going to start exploring to enhance my competency. And then that then leads us to the unconscious <laughs> competent. Because then what happens is we are starting to learn and we're starting to grow our competency, but we don't see it yet because we're still in that imposter syndrome mindset. We still think we're rubbish. We're actually growing. And we're actually doing things that other people wouldn't do, but we can't see that because we're so in our own heads. And if we can keep pushing through that, then you go through to consciously competent. <laughs> You're like, yay, I, I got there. But these pathways to get to conscious competency, uh, we have to go through it. And there has to be these steps. And and it, and, it, and it's a, a, a cycle. You don't end up getting to consciously competent and staying there because we are evolving creatures. We evolve and then there's something else we want to learn. And then we want to push the work somewhere different. And we want to maybe change the scale. And maybe I'm going to try a different material now. Just like if you've got a job, you don't hit that level usually. Some people do and they, they'll stay there, but usually you're you're growing in the role and they'll throw something else at you and then you're back to the beginning of uncom incompetent again. And and so it's it's just, it's a never evolving process. And it's nice to acknowledge that and look back now at that time when I first started and all these videos and everything that I've recorded in here and how incompetent I felt in that time. And I'll never forget recording my course, The Seven Keys, for the very first time. I felt so, I just, I've got a very small group of people and I said, I have this idea, test it out with me. <laughs> and I was testing it out on them and I was delivering the course material and and it was, it was taking a while. No one was getting any real success. And people were challenging me going, I don't understand why I've got to do this bit. And I was like, okay, because of this. And then, you know, it was a real good crowd. They were like really challenging me going, why would you get us to do this? I don't understand. And uh, and then I'll, I'll never forget, it took about three or four months after delivering those first bits of the course. People started to come and go, oh my gosh. I'm selling. Oh my gosh, I've just put this into the world. Oh my gosh, I've just met this person. Oh my gosh, this. And I was like, oh, this is working. <laughs> this is actually working. Me, how could I create something like this? And it worked. I was flabbergasted, honestly flabbergasted. And still am to this day, to be honest, because I've never, before that, never, never achieved anything. <laughs> and that's me being harsh on myself. Uh, that's how I felt at that time that I hadn't achieved. Of course I had, but at that point, that's how I felt. And that's why I'm sharing this with you because there'll be times when you feel like I haven't contributed anything. I, I haven't created anything that's worth anything. But you will be. You're just in these levels, you know. You just haven't reached the consciously competent bit yet. And, and it can take a long time. And that's why I go back to doing what you love. Go back to doing what you love. And it's a win-win. And so it's interesting now to sit here and record this final episode, looking back, and I'm going to get a bit teary now. Um, wow, looking back at all the things that I've ever recorded in here and the fear and pushing that button and sending it out and thinking, oh my gosh, is this going to help anyone? And uh, all the fears that I've had around sharing, being vulnerable and wanting to be sick and I've posted something out and I've just run away and then I'm like peeking to see what comments it's had in case people hate it. You know, all of that over the last seven years in this dining room. Um, and to sit here now with having, we have literally, it's like 50,000 people signed up to hear from us. And we have a team now. And we've just released the 100th episode of the podcast. And 
we've got a magazine and we've got merchandise that we sell and give to charity and oh my gosh and it all came from sitting out there one day going hi I'm Michelle and I want to do a video I'm just going to do a community and set it up <laughs> I'm feeling like I just wanted the world to swallow me up so there we are um I I hope that's been helpful to someone out there and who knows now where I'll be sat in the new house I've got to set that up um when I'm when I move I've got to that's the first job is to set up somewhere I can record the podcasts <laughs> we don't need to sleep we just need to record podcast episodes everyone that's what I'll be doing when I move house so okay oh thank you for sharing this moment of being in this room and this is like a new beginning for me now it's like this is the end thank you room for being the walls and space to record all these amazing episodes for people and videos and courses and everything that I've done over the last seven years now to move on so take care my friends thank you so much for listening to me and I'll catch you next week have a wonderful wonderful inspiring week take care